Let's imagine that there is an object on a smooth surface with our naked eyes. The surface seems very smooth, but zooming in by using a microscope will tell us a completely different story. The surface which we were considering as smooth actually has a lot of roughness in it. While trying to move the object, this roughness will cause all kinds of problems. It will result in a force which opposes the motion of an object. This force is known as the force of friction. The frictional force is the force that opposes the motion of an object and acts parallel to the surface the object is in contact with. The amount of friction between two surfaces depends on two factors, the kind of surfaces and the force placing the surfaces together, in other words, normal force. Let's imagine a situation where we are applying a small force to push a fridge, but fridge is too heavy and remains at rest. We know from the first law of motion that if an object is at rest, the net force applied on it is equal to zero, which means there is another force which is opposing the force we have applied and nullifying its effect. This opposing force is the force of friction. For this specific case, friction force which has been applied on a stationary object is also known as static friction force. Static friction is a type of friction force that acts on a body when there is no relative motion between the object and the surface. If we come back to net force is equal to zero equation and proceed from this point onwards, there are two forces applied on this object. Applied force which is to the right has positive value and the friction force which is opposing the motion is going to have a negative value. Applied force minus friction force is equal to zero. As a result, we can see that the magnitude of the friction force is equal to the magnitude of the applied force. Let's try to plot this information on a graph. This is friction force versus applied force graph. It is going to display the relation between these two. According to the equation we wrote, these two forces are equal. If there is no force applied on the object, then there is no friction as well. Then we start to apply a force and immediately the object will experience a friction force as well. And the value of friction force will increase as the value of applied force increases. Of course, the fridge cannot resist the increase in the force forever. At one point, it will give up and we will be able to move it. This is the point where we manage to overcome the maximum value of static friction force, which means that now we can split the graph on the screen into two parts. The part where the object is at rest and experiences a static friction force, and the part where it has overcame static friction force and starts to move. We have managed to move the object. Now let's learn about friction force applied on this object while it is moving. On the image on the screen, we finally manage to move the object and now it has a velocity which is greater than zero. Friction force applied on this object is called a kinetic friction force. It is type of a friction force that opposes the relative motion between objects in contact. Let's bring back the graph and the diagram from the previous slide. This time, we only consider the part where the object is already moving. There is an applied force trying to pull it to the right and friction force opposing the motion. As we have already passed the maximum amount of friction force, it cannot increase anymore. But we can still increase the applied force. While the applied force increases, friction force remains the same. We get a complete graph represented the relation between the friction force and applied force. Till this point, the object is at rest, and after this point, it is moving. Before this point, the friction force is static 
and equal to the applied force. After this point, the friction force is kinetic and its value is constant. Everything seems okay, but why there is this gap in the graph? Did we draw it wrong or is there something going on? The graph is correct. While explaining the friction force, we have mentioned that the reason of friction is the roughness between two surfaces. The story is true, but not complete. Another reason of friction is the attraction force between the atoms or molecules on the surfaces of two objects. So, while the object is at rest, these molecules or atoms start to know each other better and attraction between them increases. Thus, if we want to move the object, we have to overcome not only the roughness in the surface, but also this attraction force, this bond between the atoms or molecules. Afterwards, we will not have this attraction problem, so the friction force will become slightly smaller. In the last part of this video, we are going to learn how to calculate the friction force. Let's imagine this rough surface. It is rough, but there can be even rougher surface, like the one on the right side. Of course, it seems that the friction force on the right side will be greater than the one on the left, due to much greater roughness. To represent how rough the surface is, we use the Greek symbol mu. So the roughness on the left side can be represented by mu1 and the one on the right by mu2. Name given to mu in physics is the coefficient of friction. It is a value that is experimentally determined and depends on the two materials interacting. In the first part of this video, we have mentioned that the friction force depends on two factors, the kinds of the surfaces, which is represented by mu, and the force pressing the surface together, the normal force. Combining these two factors will give us a formula to calculate the force of friction. Force of friction is equal to the product of coefficient of friction and the normal force. There were two types of friction force, so we have to adjust the formula to both of them. The first one is the static friction force. We will use this formula to calculate only the maximum value of static friction force, as otherwise it is always equal to the applied force. The equation will become as maximum static friction force is equal to coefficient of static friction times normal force. Once we overcome the static friction force, there is kinetic friction force, which can be calculated as coefficient of kinetic friction times the normal force. As maximum static friction force is slightly greater than the kinetic friction force, so are coefficients. Coefficient of static friction is slightly greater than the coefficient of kinetic friction. In this video, we are going to apply the theory we have learned in the previous one to solve some examples related to the friction force. Before we even start to solve these examples, let's make sure that we have already watched the videos about the normal force, as the friction force and the normal force are directly proportional. We are not going to explain how we are calculating the normal force in this video, as it will make this video too long. You may find the links for videos about the normal force in the description section below the video. We are going to start with simple examples and then gradually increase the level of hardness of questions. In the first example, we have a 5 kg object which is on a surface with coefficient of friction of 0.2. We are asked to calculate the magnitude of friction force. Unless it is not mentioned in the question that the object is stationary or at rest, by convention, we consider that the object is in motion, which means the friction force applied on this object is the kinetic friction force. Friction force can be calculated as coefficient of friction times normal force applied on the object. On a horizontal surface, the normal force is equal to product of the mass of the object and gravitational acceleration. Coefficient of friction is 0.2, mass of the object is 5 kg, and 
the gravitational acceleration is 9.8 meters per second square. The magnitude of the friction force experienced by the object is 9.8 newtons. In the second example, we are asked to calculate the acceleration of 5 kg object while force of 30 newtons pulls it to the right. The coefficient of friction is 0 0.2. We start the solution with drawing a free body diagram. Force of gravity is applied downwards, the normal force acting upwards. There is a force of 30 newtons, an applied force acting to the right. And then there is friction force opposing the direction of motion. As we are required to calculate the acceleration of the object, we start by writing the formula for the second law of motion. We consider the direction of normal force and force of gravity are balancing each other on a vertical axis. We consider the direction of the motion, which is to the right in this case, as positive direction. The net force is equal to applied force minus the force of friction. Friction force can be calculated by multiplying coefficient of friction and the normal force. The normal force can be calculated as mass times gravitational acceleration. While substitution, the applied force is 30 newtons, coefficient of friction is 0.2, mass is 5 kilograms, and gravitational acceleration is 9.8 meters per second square. The value of the net force is 20.2 newtons. Acceleration of the object is 4.4 meters per second square. We have chosen the right as a positive direction. As the value of acceleration is positive, its direction is to the right. In the last example of this video, there is a 5 kg object sliding or at rest on an inclined plane. Angle of inclination is 37 degrees and coefficient of friction is 0.2. The task is to calculate the magnitude of friction force for two different cases. In the first case, the object is at rest. In the second one, it is sliding down. Before diving into calculating friction force, let's calm down and draw a free body diagram. There are three forces experienced by this object. The force of gravity, the normal force, and friction force. In the second video about the normal force, we have learned how to split the gravitational force acting on objects on an inclined plane into its components. We do it by drawing two forces, with one of them parallel to the surface and the other one is perpendicular. Don't forget that in the exam, in a free body diagram, we either draw the vector which represents the force of gravity or its components. If we draw force of gravity and its components on the same free body diagram, we will be penalized by one mark. That's why we remove the vector representing the force of gravity from our diagram. Once we are done with free body diagram, we can continue with the solution. In the first part, we have to calculate the magnitude of the friction force on an object which is at rest. We know that the friction force applied on an object which is at rest is the static friction force. Also, we know that the magnitude of the static friction force is always equal to the magnitude of the applied force. While the object is at rest, the parallel component of the gravitational force is trying to move it down the incline. So, the static friction force is equal to the parallel component of the force of gravity. As we have learned before, parallel component of force of gravity can be calculated by mass times gravitational acceleration times sine theta. Mass is 5 kilograms. Gravitational acceleration is 9.8 meters per second square. And theta is equal to 37 degrees. Friction force is equal to 29.49 newtons. On the other hand, if an object is in motion, the friction force experienced by it is the kinetic friction force. We calculate kinetic friction force by multiplying coefficient of friction by the normal force. On an inclined plane, the normal force is equal to the mass times gravitational acceleration times cosine theta. Coefficient of friction is 0.2, mass is 5 kilograms, gravitational acceleration is 9.8 meters per second square, 
and theta is 27 degrees. As a result, friction force applied on a moving object is 7.83 newtons. Splitting this question into two parts made it easy for us to solve it, as we became suspicious of question and easily realized that we have to apply different solution for each case. In the exams, it is our responsibility to find out that either the object is at rest and it experiences static friction force or the object is in motion and the friction force experienced by it is the kinetic one. An object is at rest on a rough surface. A force F is applied on the object with an angle of theta to the horizontal. In the first part of the question, we are asked to find out how the coefficient of friction will change if we increase the angle of theta. As we learned before, coefficient of friction depends on the two materials interacting and has nothing to do with any of the forces experienced by the object. Coefficient of friction may change only if we change the material of the surface or object. That's why increasing or decreasing the angle theta or any other quantity like mass of the object or magnitude of the applied force will have no effect on the value of coefficient of friction. It will remain same. In the second part of the question, we have to find out how the static friction force will change if the angle theta has been increased. Our task has been made easier by the phrase static in the question. But even if it wasn't mentioned, we have to know that if an object is at rest, the friction first applied on it is the static one. Let's remember that the magnitude of the static friction force is equal to the magnitude of the applied force. To find out which force or forces will try to move the object, it's good idea to start the solution by drawing a free body diagram. Force of gravity is applied downwards. Normal force is acting upwards. In a free body diagram, lengths of arrows are not important, as we draw them even before we start solving the question, and thus, in most cases, we don't know their magnitudes. The third force exerted on the object is the applied force, and the last one is the force of friction. We can split the applied force into its components. F parallel for the one which is parallel to the surface, and F perpendicular for the one which is acting perpendicular to the surface. Don't forget to erase the vector representing the applied force, in case you have drawn its components. As in the exams, you may draw either vector itself or its components. You will be penalized by one mark for drawing both on the same diagram. We can see that the friction force is equal to the parallel component of the applied force. The parallel component is in the horizontal direction and the horizontal line is adjacent to the angle of theta. Thus, F parallel and friction force in this case are equal to F times cosine theta. We know from maths that if you increase the angle, value of function cosine will decrease. As a result, the magnitude of the friction force will also decrease. Unlike the previous question, in this one, the object is in motion. Again, we have to find out how will the value of friction force change if we increase the angle of theta. Everything regarding this question and the previous one are same except for the state of the object. That's why we can draw the same free body diagram for this question as well. The object is in motion, which means the friction force applied on the object is the kinetic friction force. Unlike the static friction force, we calculate the magnitude of the kinetic friction force by using a fixed formula. Friction force is equal to the product of the coefficient of friction and the normal force. If you forgot how to calculate the normal force for this type of questions, you can click on the link above on the screen. When a force acting with an angle to the horizontal tries to pull an object, the magnitude of the normal force is equal to 
the difference of force of gravity and perpendicular component of the applied force. Perpendicular component is on a vertical axis and the vertical axis is opposite to theta. Thus, F perpendicular is equal to F times sine theta. As we know, if we increase the angle, the value of function sine increases. Due to the minus in the equation, magnitude of the normal force and friction force decreases. In the last example, the object is on an inclined plane with a rough surface. Where? To find out how will the magnitude of friction force change while object is at rest or while it is sliding down if we increase the angle of incline. We have to get used to start solving questions for this topic by drawing a free body diagram. There are three forces acting upon the object. Force of gravity, which we draw downwards. The normal force, which is perpendicular to the surface. And force of friction opposing the motion. As a next step, we resolve the force of gravity into its components. One perpendicular to the surface and another one parallel to the surface. After drawing the components, we can delete the vector representing the force of gravity. Once done with the free body diagram, we can start to look at each case separately. In case 1, the object is at rest, meaning the friction force applied on it is the static friction force. And the magnitude of the static friction force is equal to the magnitude of the force which tries to move it along the surface. In other words, parallel component of the gravitational force. We recall from the previous questions that Fg parallel on an inclined plane is equal to the mass times gravitational acceleration times sine theta. If the angle increases, the value of function sine also increases. Thus, the value of static friction force is also increasing. In case the object is sliding down, the friction force applied on it is the kinetic friction force, which is equal to the product of coefficient of friction and the normal force. On an inclined plane, the magnitude of the normal force is equal to the magnitude of the Fg perpendicular, which can be calculated as mass times gravitational acceleration times cosine theta. If theta increases, value of function cosine decreases, which means the magnitude of the friction force also decreases. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notifications in order to be updated about my new videos.